In August of 2009, 25-year-old Asuncion, or Susie, of Villa Villa was pleading with police that her boyfriend kidnapped her 35-day-old son, Israel Santos. At the time, she had been held in Butler County Jail in Ohio on suspicion that she was involved in Israel's disappearance. Susie claimed that Israel had been missing and that the 21-year-old boyfriend who fathered the child was the obvious culprit. But Susie's story didn't add up, and investigators would soon find evidence of one of the most despicable acts of selfishness ever committed in the state. This is the brief story of Susie Avila Villa. Not too much is known about Susie Avila Villa, but her record as a mother was brought to light when investigators asked neighbors about her competence as a mother. Detectives said that the response was that Susie, quote, wasn't a good mother at all. She was very abusive to the three-year-old girl, and the three-year-old girl did everything around the house, unquote. It's not clear who this three-year-old was, but making a three-year-old do all the housework is indicative of an unfit mother. While it's also not clear about Susie's history, what is often linked to poor behavior is a child's upbringing. Psychologists would view a number of factors to determine future behavior, including whether or not both parents were involved in the child's life, where the child grew up, and who they surrounded themselves with and whether any gang-related activity was involved, as well, of course, as substance abuse. In August 2009, Susie reported her son, Israel Santos, missing and claimed that her 21-year-old boyfriend, who was not named, had taken him. She was brought into Butler County Jail for questioning and detention. Upon questioning, investigators asked if Susie would be willing to take a lie detector test. She obliged and subsequently failed it. When she was told that she was not acting like a mother whose child had been missing for 12 hours, she, quote, didn't really say anything. She forced out one tear and quit, unquote. That's what investigators said. Soon, investigators would pull up trash retrieved from Susie's apartment complex. Inside, the remains of Israel were found. Upon relaying this information to Susie, it is reported that she remained silent and then cried and told police that on August 24, she had shaken Israel's head as he sat in his bouncy seat to try and stop him from crying. Shaking a baby can cause severe brain damage and even death. When she was asked to explain Israel's bruises and broken bones, Susie denied causing any of them. But police were already on high alert. She had already lied numerous times by this point. She lied about the claim that her boyfriend took her child, she lied on the polygraph test, and they weren't going to buy the unintentional homicide bit. Because you see, at the time of his death, five-week-old Israel weighed a malnourished nine pounds. To put his weight into perspective, he was born just three ounces lighter. Butler County Coroner Richard Burkhart said, quote, she wasn't feeding him enough, unquote. At this point, despite not knowing too much about Susie, we can start to put together a portrait. A lazy mother in a filthy, unkempt apartment who slept around and relied on government welfare. But the real story of how we got to the fateful August day is far worse. From September 2008 through to November 2008, Susie needed to escape her misery. While it's not clear what her situation was like at the time, prosecutors characterized Susie as, quote, reckless in her decisions. In those three months, despite not being fit for motherhood, she had sexual relations with her boyfriend that would end up impregnating her. Several months would pass and the baby, Israel Santos, would be born. It's not clear of the health of the baby at birth. However, there were just two problems. First, Susie had no money, so Susie applied for and began receiving monthly government assistance. Basically, she would collect a paycheck every month, 
ostensibly to care for her newborn. But from the looks of the case, it probably wasn't to care for Israel. The second bigger problem is that the state needed to know who Israel's father was in order to get him, and not the taxpayer, to pay for child support. And so, Susie was due to appear in front of the Job and Family Services Agency on August 27, just three days after Israel's murder, to identify the baby's father by name and DNA or risk losing her public benefits. A non-issue, right? Except Susie had a third problem. Israel's father was underage. He wasn't in his 20s, as she told police. He was just 14 years old when Susie had sex with him, which is categorized by the state as an unlawful sexual conduct with a minor carrying a third-degree felony charge. Faced with that, Susie had to make a decision. On August 24, 2009, Susie made the decision. To avoid a rape charge, she would try to get away with murder. It's not like this was her only decision either. Perhaps she could have avoided government scrutiny by getting a job, but apparently murder was more convenient. After murdering Israel, who was only wearing a diaper, she threw his body in the trash. In order to conceal the smell of the rotting corpse, she stuffed dirty diapers and other smelling items with the boy. Susie was later charged that month with aggravated murder gross abuse of a corpse, tampering with evidence, and unlawful sexual conduct with a minor. The stupidity and callousness of this crime lent itself to a natural defense of insanity. Defense lawyers argued such, that Susie was suffering from mental health problems and she couldn't be culpable. Susie even told investigators that she had mental health issues. Meanwhile, prosecutors sought the death penalty, which would have made Susie one of only a handful to get that in the state. One lawyer for the state said this case was tailor-made for the death penalty in its complete callousness. That the mother broke a sacred trust between caretaker and son for purely selfish purposes. The state did believe that Susie's mental health problems would blunt some of the severity of her punishment. But Susie wouldn't take a chance with a trial. In April 2011, Susie pled guilty to avoid the death penalty. In exchange, she would receive life in prison without parole. She also gave up her right to appeal the verdict. The mother who once sought government assistance will continue to receive government assistance in federal prison. She will be sheltered, fed, and likely be enrolled in educational programs, all at the taxpayer's expense. While Susie's history is largely unclear, what is clear is that she appeared destined to fail. Felony count three, Asuncion Avila Vila, did knowing that an official proceeding or investigation is in progress or is about to be or likely to be instituted, alter, destroy, conceal, or remove any record, document, or thing with purpose to impair its value or availability as evidence in such proceeding or investigation, which constitutes the offense of tampering with evidence, a third degree felony, and count four, unlawful sexual conduct with a minor. On or about September 2008 